guys, my name is Nicole. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am refinishing this dresser that I've obviously painted before in the past. It is sat in my antique booth for months and months and it is time for me to do something else with it so that maybe it will sell. It's just taking up valuable real estate at this point in my booth. I hate to do anything to it because I actually really love it. But you know what? It's sitting for a reason. I'm not really sure why, but I'm just going to try a completely different look on it and see if that gives me a better result. So I'm kind of going out of my comfort zone here with this piece. But it's always good to kind of push your boundaries, try new things. I know the red is going to be really pretty in my booth for fall. And the boho is so on trend right now that I'm happy to kind of see how my hand at this trend looks and it's kind of the first time i've done this i'm also going to do like a stencil technique on the drawers which is new for me so all good things always good to kind of try something new um, as far as your design goes and so let's just get right into the project as you can see i've been sanding for what felt like an eternity my problem with this was that i was trying to get off latex paint which i forgot that the white that was first on this piece was latex not chalk so it was so hard to sand off it took me forever of course, when you think that you're gonna have a simple project, uh, it just never really works out that way. So you can see I used my orbital sander at first, then I got my Dremel out to do like the edges and to even do um, the latex so I could just get more pressure on there. I didn't, I was just trying everything at this point, but eventually I did get all of that white latex paint off. It was definitely a labor of love. So whenever I sand things off of any surface, I start with um, a 60 or 80 grit sandpaper then I moved to a 120 grit and then a 220. Sorry if you can hear my baby in the background. He's just playing. So I finished up with a 220 grit. That leaves me a really nice smooth finish. And then for this piece, I don't stain it. I just seal it with a clear coat, which you're going to see me do in a bit. So I'm on to the two, no, sorry, the 120 grit at this point. And that's going to be really great for taking out some discoloration spots. So right there, um, there was just some like maybe old stain underneath or even water damage. And I was really able to get all that discoloration out with this medium grit, 120. Um, so the 80 grit really did a great job of taking away all the paint. Right now I'm kind of taking away all those discolored spots. And then now I'm going in with the 220 grit and making everything nice and smooth. So here's how the wood looks when it's all finished. I love bringing out the natural wood grain on any piece. I think it's so beautiful. Um, and I knew there was pretty wood hiding underneath there and here it is. Now you can see it and enjoy it. Now moving right along to painting the actual piece. So I'm using Rusty Nail from Dixie Bell. It is a chalk paint. I sell Dixie Bell on my Etsy site. So if you need a vendor, you can find me there. And I have a $5 flat rate shipping over $50. If you'd like to place an order over there, I'll have that link down in my description box below. So this Rusty Nail color is like a really, um, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it exactly. It's almost like a burnt red. It's not very vibrant. I really like it. It's just kind of a softer color. I feel like it records a little more red than it actually is in real life. So I really enjoyed working with this. It has a lot of orange in it. And I thought it was really good for that bohemian style. It's not like a farmhouse red necessarily. Um, it's a little bit softer than that. Um, I definitely needed to do, to do two coats on this piece. So I show myself doing the first coat, but I do a second coat later on that I don't show you guys. Um, and then I also do not show myself waxing this piece because it's so hot during uh, the days that I'm filming this. I actually still haven't waxed it because it's like 110 outside today. Um, that's at least the heat index. And in my garage, it's even worse. So I will finish this off by using the Dixie Belle Clear Coat Wax. I'm just, I just didn't do it today. And then as a special touch on this piece, I made this stencil on my Cricut. My husband actually designed this for me on his iPad um, using Procreate. And then I transferred it over to my Cricut software cut it out on my Cricut machine. I made it so that it would fit perfectly. And I'm using the color Putty from Dixie Bell. This is kind of just like a very um, soft tannish color. Uh, I normally use Sandbar a lot and this is the next shade darker. So if you see my other videos, Putty is a new color for me, but I really, really like it because I didn't want anything high contrast. I just wanted like a really subtle 
detail on these drawer fronts. So the putty color was perfect because it was pretty similar to the wood color and just enough visual interest on those drawers. Whenever I stencil anything, I use a makeup sponge and just a very, very light touch. I, I like to spread it out on the paper plate so that my paint is nice and thin when it goes on my sponge. And then I can go on really delicately onto my stencils so that there's no bleed through. I have really good results with this. I know people complain about um, their stencil bleeding a lot, but this method is really tried and true for me. I've done it on a million projects at this point. Maybe not a million, but quite a few, dozens and dozens of projects, and this technique does not fail me. So then when I lift it up, it's pretty much already dry because the chalk paint dries so quickly, and you can see how nice and pretty that came out with really nice crisp lines. Now you're going to see me make a little board for the back of this dresser. There's just a blank spot there where there probably used to be a piece of decorative trim or even a mirror. It's not there anymore, so I didn't know if that was maybe a reason that people weren't buying it originally, so I decided to go ahead and cut a board that I could fit there. I'm gonna paint it red so that it all looks like one complete piece. And then later on, you'll see me rounding the corners of it with my Dremel tool, just so it looks a little bit more finished. Um, I think this part came out really nicely. The brad nailer I'm using is the Ryobi brad nailer. I got it from Home Depot for about $99 around Black Friday. It is an amazing tool. I use it on all my woodworking projects and it can use quarter inch brad nails all the way up to like an inch and a half, I think. I use it all the time. I get a lot of questions about it. So that's what that is. It's the Ryobi um, finishing brad nailer. As you can see, I'm also finishing the back of the piece by just giving it a light coat of paint. I use the water to kind of thin out the chalk paint so I'm not using quite as much paint on the back. So it's not a perfect paint job on the back but it does look nice and finished and much nicer than if you just leave the wood and like the old paint kind of splattered everywhere. I think that looks really nice in the end. And now I'm going to go ahead and clear coat it with the Dixie Bell clear coat in a flat finish. I'm going to do two coats but I only show myself applying one. I just pour it on there spread it around and then make sure that I go back through with some really broad brush strokes so there's no um, paint marks. What am I trying to say? So there's no brush marks, there we go, in the end. So I, this goes on really nicely, nice and easy. After it's done, I go over it with some 220 grit sandpaper just to make sure that it's nice and smooth. And I've had a really easy time working with this top coat. I really enjoy working with it. Okay, I've been working on this dresser now for about two days. Last night I did all the sanding and then today I did all the painting. And I don't know, I'm kind of at the stopping point where I feel like it's kind of missing something. Let me flip the camera around and show you what I mean. So here it is and I, I mostly just feel like it's fine, you know? Looks good. I mean the top is a lot better. It's nice and cleaned off. I love uh, showing off the wood like this as opposed to having the top painted. I almost always prefer an unpainted top. Um, what I think I need to do though, is round out the corners of that red piece in the back. I can't decide if it's just sticking out to me because I know what it looked like before without it. But I do think just rounding it off like with the sander would help. And then I really think that I need to paint the top drawer red. And I think that would maybe balance out all the wood. And then we could kind of accent the bottom two drawers with the stencil. So I think I'm gonna do that, go ahead and paint that drawer red, and then call it a day.
Okay guys, I'm so interested to hear your thoughts on this piece. I feel so torn about it because it's so not my style, but I like it. And I don't know, I mean, it's exactly the 180 that I was going for. And I feel like since I'm on the fence about it, there's a really good chance it'll sell quickly because recently the things that I love the most have just been kind of sitting there and I'm doubting myself and all these things. But I do think that this one has some potential. It's very different. I'm a little nervous to put it in my booth, but I think for the fall, it's the perfect color. So just let me know down in the comments what you think. I do still need to wax it. Um, so I'll definitely post like the very finished result on Instagram and I'll try to remember to do it over here too. But if you don't follow me over there already, make sure you hop over to Instagram and give me a like there too. Um, but that's it for this video. I'll show you guys what it looks like in the booth as soon as I'm able to put it in there. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.